the P-Series test is going to be a test that is it's pretty powerful. It, it does a lot for us, but it, it's also very limited, uh, which sounds like a contradiction, and it kind of is. Um, the the P-Series test only works for a very specific kind of series, um, specifically a P-Series, and, and we'll look at what a P-Series is in a second. Um, what the P-Series test allows us to do, though, is to test whether a P-Series converges or diverges, and then we might have to use that along with the limit comparison test or maybe some other test to see if a, a wider range of series will converge or diverge. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about the P-Series test here. We're going to go back and look at the limit comparison test, and, and we're going to see how we can use a P-Series test with that to do it. So let's, let's look at the P-Series test first. Uh, the P-Series test has to do with a series that looks like this. It's in this form. And so the form is 1 over n to the P. And so it gets its name, the P-Series test, from this P, the exponent here. And P is going to be some constant. It's, it's going to be some number. And we've, we've seen one of the P-Series fairly often in this class already. Um, if P were to equal 1, what series is this? It's a harmonic series, right? Um, if P is something other than 1, like 2, we have something like 1 over n squared, are the terms in that series bigger or smaller than the terms in the harmonic series? Smaller, why? Because the denominator is going to be bigger, exactly. If you remember, uh, fairly early on when we saw the harmonic series for the first time, I said something along the lines that the harmonic series is just barely divergent. So it's kind of on the edge of, of being a convergent series, but it's not a convergent series. It actually does diverge. Um, if, if we were to make the terms in the harmonic series smaller, what do you think might happen? It's going to converge. Now we have to do it in a certain way to make it converge. But basically, if we increase p by just a little bit, instead of being 1, it's anything bigger than 1, then the series is going to converge. On the other hand, if p is smaller, so if we have like 1 over n to the 1 half, which would be 1 over the square root of n, then that's going to make the terms bigger. And if the terms are bigger than a, a series that's already divergent, then what's going to happen? It's going to diverge, right? Okay, that, you can prove that just using a direct comparison test. So if you have a series that diverges and you have another series that's bigger term by term, then that series is also going to diverge. So what the P-series test says is, for this series, it's going to converge if P is greater than 1, and it's going to diverge if P is less than or equal to 1. So again, to use the P-series test, it has to be exactly in this form. So anytime the denominator is bigger than n to the first, so if it's n to the 1.1, or n squared, or n to the fifth, or n whatever, bigger than 1, it's going to converge because the terms are going to be smaller than the harmonic series. And then, on the other hand, if the terms are, are bigger than the harmonic series because p is less than 1, then it's going to diverge. Um, why would this be true? Let me ask this. How did we prove that the harmonic series diverges? Do you remember what test we used? The integral test. So if we were to take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x then that's going to that's gonna diverge. That's going to be an infinite area. We could use the integral test on any P-series. So if we, were, if we wanted to show that the sum of 1 over n squared converges, we could just take the integral of 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity, and that's going to be a finite number. So we can use the integral test to show that this part is true. Anytime P is greater than 1, it's going to converge. And anytime P is less than or equal to 1, it's going to diverge. So this works because of the integral test. So the P-series test is a very straightforward test to use if the series is a P-series. And so if we get a series that looks like this, that's a P-series test, or that's a P-series. What is P equal in this, t in this case? One. Yeah, so P equals 1. So besides the fact that it's a harmonic series, it's also a P-series. Harmonic series is a specific type of P-series. Um, so since p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1, then what does that mean? This one diverges by the p 
series test. Is this series a P series? Okay, so it is a P series. P is equal to what? 2, which is greater than 1. So that means that what? It converges by the P series test. Here's two more that are very, both of these are really, really close to the harmonic series. Um, but one of them converges and one of them diverges. I'm just, I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but what does P equal here? So that means that it's going to do what? It's going to converge because the exponent in the denominator is bigger than 1. And so the terms are going to be smaller and it's going to converge. What does P equal here? 0.999, so it's going to diverge. Again, we haven't seen many series that are in exactly this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a comparison test with series that, look, that behave similar to a P-series but aren't necessarily AP series themselves.